During the 2016 American Academy of Ophthalmology meeting, Duke Eye Center held educational presentations in our exhibit booth. We hope you enjoy watching the faculty sharing the latest in ophthalmology. I'm Missy Delavoye, I'm a cornea specialist at, du at Duke, and I'm going to talk about limbal stem cell disease and how it can happen to anyone. So hopefully you can take some of these tips back to your practice and, and use it when you see patients like this. So I have no financial disclosures. Uh, limbal stem cell deficiency is when you have insufficient limbal stem cells, so you cannot replace or revitalize your corneal epithelium. Your um, limbus is obviously where the cornea meets the sclera, and this is where the palisades of vote are. You need at least 25 to 30 percent of these to be working so that you can resurface your cornea. Anywhere below that, you're going to start to see signs of deficiency in poor epithelium. So you can have total limbal stem cell deficiency or just partial. Um, and so this little schematic basically says you lose your limbal stem cells, you're going to uh, lose your ability to repair and renew your epithelium, you're going to lose the barrier between your conjunctiva and your cornea, which leads to persistent epi defects, corneal neovascularization, and then scarring, loss of vision, chronic pain, and um, risk for cornea transplant failure in the future. So signs and symptoms are tearing, blurry vision, photophobia. These are very nonspecific signs, um, so that doesn't really help you much there. But on exam, you're going to see stippled epithelium. And as you can see in this one, it's quite sectoral, and it's under the upper lid. So this wouldn't be your run-of-the-mill dry eye. That would typically be inner palpebral, um, more like a PEE look. Limbal stem cell deficiency most often starts under the upper lid. So the superior limbus is what tends to be damaged first. So that should be your first clue that this is something a little bit more than exposure. And then whorl kerat keratopathy, um, vortex keratopathy. So here, this is even without staining, and you can see that kind of whorl. So those epithelial cells just aren't healthy, and they're sort of fighting against the good and the bad. And this one even has a little spot of keratinization. And then this one's even worse. So this is keratin crossing over the limbus, and it's not able to protect that barrier there. So um, other ways to diagnose limbal stem cell deficiency is with impression cytology on the cornea. So these are goblet cells, the purple round cells. They should not be on the cornea. They should be only in the conjunctiva. Um, although there are limbal stem cell diseases that cause an overall loss of goblet cells, so you can get a false negative reading on impression cytology. You can also use confocal microscopy, which will show changes in the epithelial cells. So instead of having nice, tight-packed epithelial cells, they kind of spread out and get bigger, and then eventually just scarring, and you can't even discern each cell. So what are the causes? So there can be congenital causes. Probably the most familiar is aniridia, Turner syndrome, scleral cornea. There's not really much we can do in the way of preventing this, but we, there are some things we can do to help their vision. Trauma, obviously thermal, fire crack injury tends to be one that we see a lot. Chemical injuries um, of all different sorts. Um, and then chronic inflammatory conditions. So Stevens-Johnson's, OCP, graft versus host disease. This is an OCP patient here. And then there are atrogenic causes. So these are the things that we can help or try to prevent. So contact lens overwear or abuse, um, BAK, think of a chronic use of glaucoma drops with preservatives. And then chemotherapy agents, so things we're using obviously to help people can, can backfire and have some side effects. And then surgery, so again, we'll, we'll blame glaucoma surgery. So a lot of limbus-based surgeries um, can damage these cells. And also chemotherapy or biopsy, things like that, large lesions that have to be removed. So treatment options for the ocular surface, kind of the easy ones we think of first, lubricating, anti-inflammatories. Um, I'm a big fan of serum tears. I basically tell patients you're trying to make the environment that they live in as healthy as possible so you can preserve what you have. Um, and then another common thing is debridement. So you're going to remove that area, especially if it's only a partial limbal stem cell deficiency. You can remove those abnormal cells and then hope that the good ones sort of win the race and cover up that area. A lot of times I'll do this in conjunction with amniotic membrane. <laughs> I'll let Ashiana take a picture. Um, so this is just a brief slide on amniotic membrane. So Precara, these are ones that can be done in the office. Slim, regular, and plus. And then the dehydrated version, AmbioDisc. There's um, other brands too, but basically they're dehydrated. Put them on the surface and then cover with a soft contact lens. This is very well tolerated comfort-wise for patients. On the surgical end, there's the same type, so amniograft, which is kind of like the middle part of the Procara, and then dehydrated Ambio 2 and 5, different thicknesses that you can use in the OR. And again, there's different brands of these. 
Um, so moving on to other surgical options, there's conjunctival limbo auto limbo autograft. So this is basically an autologous transplant. So you're taking cells from their good eye, their unaffected eye, and transplanting it to the affected eye. So obviously this is only indicated in unilateral disease, um, and they can't have any contraindications in their other eye. Unfortunately, this isn't that many patients. A lot of times there's are bilateral diseases. Um, this can be staged with the corneal transplant if you need it later. Um, and the benefit of this is obviously no rejection. It's their tissue. They don't need to be on immunosuppressive medicines. So this is a schematic from Dr. Ed Holland. And so they're taking from the unaffected eye, doing a 360 pyridomy and a superficial keratectomy on the affected eye, and then taking these down and sewing them at the 12 and, nine, uh, 12 and 6 o'clock position. And then those limbal stem cells hopefully start working and replenish the epithelium. A keratolimbal limbal autograft, or a KLAL, is basically using a living-related or cadaveric tissue if they are a bilateral disease or you can't take from the other eye. So the big difference with this is they have to now be on systemic immunosuppressives. So we're kind of moving more like an organ transplant. We're out of the immune-privileged site like a cornea transplant. This is just a slide showing all the immunosuppressives and the um, anti-infectives that they're on throughout the course. They can typically get off in about three to five years, but this is kind of just to show you um, how in-depth it can get. And then again, this is another schematic from Dr. Holland. Same thing, 360 pyridomy, a superficial keratectomy, but this time you're taking it from um, the both eyes from a cadaveric donor. You take three of the four pieces so that it skirts on the outside of the limbus. If you just took two, it would be too small to fit all the way around, so you have to do three. Um, and this is, has been coined the Cincinnati procedure, again from Dr. Ed Holland. This is where you have a living related donor, um, but you fill in the rest of the space with a cadaveric donor, so it's a kind of a combination. Um, the systemic immunosuppressives for both are the same, so it doesn't really change. Um, newer techniques are the SLET. This is also considered an autologous, so you have to have a healthy eye where you can take the cells from, basically kind of cut them up into little pieces, use amniotic membrane and fibrin glue to put it on the surface. And essentially, they act as their own petri dish for the epithelial cells then to kind of clear. And they've had good results. I personally haven't tried this yet. And then obviously, moving to the future is culturing these limbal stem cells. So either from their unaffected eye, from a family member, or maybe even further in the future, just you know, in the lab, generating these cells so we can replace them for patients who need it. So I think we're a long way from using this um, in the clinic. But I think it's promising research, and it will help a lot of people if we get it up and running. And another option is a keratoprosthesis, so a lot of people do these. Basically, a transplantation of an artificial cornea when you know a uh, regular cornea will not be sustainable in an eye. And this is just the cross-section showing the optic, the transplant tissue, and then the back plate, which is now um, titanium. So then I just wanted to share a couple cases um, that you might see in your clinic. So this is a 37-year-old female. She was sent for evaluation of dry eye and had a diagnosis of band keratopathy, but this obviously isn't the normal distribution of band keratopathy. Didn't look like band keratopathy. Um, she was a contact lens wearer. She did admit to sleeping in her lenses. She had no other medical or ocular history, and the other eye looks completely normal. So we did a debridement just of this area, um, and I know her pigment looks really different, but I promise it's the same person. But you can see she cleared in the center there, and vision went back to normal. And then there's a close-up of that little tongue that's still superiorly there. Because I haven't fixed those cells. They're still poor uh, limbal stem cells. But we've basically just cleared her central vision. And we told her this may happen again. You might need to have it repeated. I told her it was OK to wear contact lenses as long as she wore dailies. And obviously, we re revisited contact lens hygiene. And she's been doing fine. This patient was a 55-year-old female, um, had been complaining of decreased vision in her both eyes, but mostly the right eye. She was a contact lens wearer. She denied abuse, swimming, sleeping, but she had been wearing them for decades. She had gotten multiple diagnoses, mostly variations of dry eye syndrome, recurrent erosion. She had been on multiple therapies. Um, and so what we did was a debridement with a Procara, and she did really well. Um, her vision returned to normal. I advised her to just completely stop contact lens wear because both eyes showed signs of being affected, and I didn't think it was safe for her to resume. She actually comes back almost like clockwork about every January, and we have to re-debride. And we'll continue doing that as long as she gets back to baseline, but eventually she may need more aggressive therapy. Uh, this is an interesting case. She has Turner syndrome, which is um, sometimes related to limbal stem cell deficiency. And she had multiple ocular surgeries when she was younger for pterygium removal. 
on things like this. So this is her right eye. She complained of vision, but cosmetically it just didn't look very good. But she could see 2040 from this eye. So we used amniotic membrane um, and did a reconstruction of her surface, and she looks great. Vision was about the same. This is a 51-year-old male with an alkaline burn to his right eye, 2400. His left eye was completely unaffected. So we did an autologous transplant here. Uh, this was one month later. He was 2400. And about five months later, he was 2080, and we fit him with a rigid contact lens. This was a 35-year-old um, female with a firecracker injury, as you can see to her right eye. Um, her eye had been like this for several years, and they basically told her there was nothing that could be done. So she's got some blepharon to her upper lid. Um, I love this picture because this is three days out, and you can see the edge of the graft here and the epithelial cells that are starting to be sp I call it spit out, but they're super clear right in that area. So you know it's starting to work. S still wasn't great. She had count fingers. So this is where she started. This is where she ended up. Um, not perfect in one of my learning cases where I probably should have done more on each side too because her scarring was so severe. Um, but this was her other eye, which you can see looks basically normal. You can't tell where you took the graph from. This is a 41-year-old male um, born with aniridia. He had lost his other eye from multiple surgeries. He was NLP and now hand motion in this eye. Uh, we decided to do a primary keratoprosthesis, and uh, he did great initially, reaching 2200, which is, was his aniridic baseline. Um, and then this was a 57-year-old female who um, was orig originally referred because she had this, it's probably hard to see with the lights, but some pigment there. So she had PAM. Um, they biopsied it, and it came back with a severe atypia. So she was treated with topical mitomycin, but she misunderstood the instructions. So instead of doing a week on, a week off, a week on, a week off, she did it continuously for a month. And when she came back, um, she was bright red. And you can see even here there's blanching, almost like a chemical burn. And then the epithelium is all abnormal. And this is even after several treatments. So I got her after kind of all of this. So she had gone through several debridements, amniotic membranes, and basically now um, she's scheduled for an autologous limbal stem cell transplant from her other eye. Um, this is a, oh, last but not least, this is a 58-year-old female with severe atopic disease. So she was initially referred for OCP because she had conjunctival scarring, poor vision in both eyes. Um, we basically got her disease managed where it wasn't progressing, but her vision, um, the sequelae of all of her previous inflammation was too much. She had a K-Pro done in her left eye. I'm not a fan of bilateral K-Pros. I think they're just too dangerous <laughs> to put in both eyes. Um, and so she's very motivated to rehab both eyes, and we're going to do um, a cat cadaveric limbal stem cell transplant in her right eye. Um, these are my kids. <laughs> so any questions from anybody? Thank you very much.